Hi guys, so this is the second video of the 100 head study project that I'm working on it right now. And um, in this video, I decided to do a grayscale painting. And um, unlike the piece I did last time, I'm using a non-mix brush. So I'm, I'm using the same um, oil paint effect brush in Photoshop, but this time the colors don't mix. And um, I just wanted to do something opposite from what I did from last time. Last video, I was focusing more on um, experimenting with colors and the mixing of colors. In this video, I'm focusing on just really breaking down the portrait into planes and uh, studying values. So as you can see, I'm constructing the drawing first, and then I'm roughly dividing the the value structure. So I'm doing I'm basically doing a two tone value structure uh, throughout the face, and uh, this time I'm flipping the image and um, I'm making sure that the drawing looks somewhat believable. I'm not really going for accuracy, but I still want you know, the, the drawing to look natural and, you know, somewhat like intended. So now I'm hitting the darks and like I, like I mentioned in uh, the first painting, uh, you want to establish the darks when you're working with an opaque material. It's, it's going to give you a sense of the overall, overall value scheme. So that's something to keep in mind. That's that's the typical way you would want to work um, if you're working in oils, um, acrylic, gouache, or any type of opaque material. So I'm really going in with the darks. I'm hitting the darks, and as I'm doing it, I'm reestablishing the drawing, the structure, and um, I'm s slowly building. You know the the structure of the darks. And then once I put the, down the darks, I'm going to use a slightly lighter value. It's still very dark. I'm still, at this stage, I'm still um, treating the darks, but this time I'm using like an 80 to 90% gray. And I'm gradually moving on to the lighter tones And in terms of uh, brush sizes, um, I tend to work with a broader brush in the beginning. So I'm, I'm getting the overall structure correct. I'm getting the overall um, values correct. And this helps me to not re really get lost in you know the, the details. I, I wanna get the the overall sense of volume correct before I move into like the features of the portrait. So now I've moved on to like a slightly brighter gray. I'm kind of using a dry brush effect right now because I don't want, um, because I don't want to hit like too dark of a values abruptly. Um, but now I've moved on to the mid-tones and, and, and I'm starting to really press down onto, onto the tablet and you know, get it, getting in some nice like, thick paint onto the image. And, and this is something that you would, you know, you would do in an actual painting. So it's, it's a very similar process. And, um, in this painting as well, uh, besides the background, I'm using only one layer. So I'm really approaching this as I would a regular painting. And now I, I'm building up the lights, but as you can see, I'm really thinking about the planes and the shapes of the lights 
and the values. So I'm not trying to mix colors this time. I'm really separating the planes. And because this is a non-mix brush, um, the, so the colors don't mix together, um, I would say this is a more similar process to an acrylic painting ra rather than an oil painting. So because of the nature of acrylics, the material is going to dry faster on the canvas or on paper or whatever material you're drawing on or painting on. So I would say this process is more similar to an acrylic painting. So now I'm trying to get the structure of the midtones and the lights. Um, I'm using a slightly smaller size brush now and I'm gradually getting into the details. And I, f I just flipped the image over to see if uh, the drawing's correct or it looks all right the other way. And in uh, and in this project, I'm not necessarily going for accuracy or likeness. I'm trying to be more expressive and more experimental. These are all studies. Um, they're not meant to be finished pieces. So um, I don't mind if the drawing looks exaggerated or you know, distorted here and there. Um, but um, what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to have a certain goal for each each painting and I'm trying to focus more on that. So in this case, I was focusing more on you know, studying the planes and getting the value values right according to the plane construction. And now I'm using I guess, a small brush to get the lights and the midtones. And even when I'm moving on to like a smaller brush or a tighter area, I'm always thinking about planes and when I'm treating a painting. So to generalize, I would consider like drawing to be a linear process and painting to be very two-dimensional and it's more planar. Um, I mean, it's not that you, can, you can't apply two-dimensional techniques to drawing and um, linear techniques to painting, but Overall, the process is very two-dimensional and, and you really want to search for the planes in a painting, whereas in drawing, um, the elements are obviously going to be more linear. Now I'm using a very tighter, smaller brush and I'm starting to get into the details. I'm still trying to maintain a distance. I'm, I'm trying to trying not to zoom in as much and kind of get lost in, in the details. So I'm trying to stay as zoomed out as possible so I can get the overall structure and the overall values correct. And, um, I, I want to make sure everything looks correct on the first read, so from afar. And I'm not really interested in the details in this painting. Um, what I want is a nice first read, an overall value structure that's correct. And I want the collection of the shapes and the values to work together. So. Um, if you zoom in on this, it'll probably look very, look very like unfinished and a little rough, but I'm, I'm totally okay with that in this painting.
And even when I'm doing the, uh, the wrinkles of the lips or very tight areas in the eyes and um, like certain linear elements, I'm still treating everything as like small planes. So you can see some of the details here. I'm just going in to some areas where I, where I need to focus in a bit, but I'm trying to stay as like far out from the painting as possible. And this is how I would normally uh, paint in oil or acrylic. I try to get, I try to stay as far from the painting as possible. And then as I'm finishing, I'll get in and paint in and draw in the details. And in this case, I'm only zooming in when I feel like I don't have enough control. And once I'm done, I'll, I'll zoom back out. And it's always a good idea to um, back out often, as often as you can, because um, your eyes tend to get used to the image and you don't really get to see like some of the flaws or like some of the value issues if you're working up close all the time. So now I'm treating the background. And once I did that, I think I took a pause. So yeah, I'm saving the image. I took a pause. I printed the image out on a smaller scale and um, I put it on a wall and I, I looked at it from like a distance and um, I was able to spot some like value issues, some areas that were like distracting too much and um, I'm treating treating those areas and I'm fixing certain issues and I'm uh, finishing up the painting so even for an hour study a short study like this I wouldn't typically finish everything in like one sitting I would take at least one break in between just to get a fresh set of eyes and uh, take a look at the fin uh, take a look at the painting in process. And now I'm uh, yeah, getting like certain transitions correct. At this point, I'm checking the overall value and I decided to finish there. So this painting was more about planes, like I mentioned. Um, I used a non-mixing brush so I could really separate um, the planes and the values. And um, yeah, I, I wanted to, to really focus on the values so I eliminated color and worked in grayscale and it was fun. Um, I haven't painted digitally in black and white in a really long time. I typically work in Illustrator for my portraits and uh, yeah, it's fun getting back into Photoshop. And um, yeah, I, I enjoyed the second portrait. So I hope uh, this helps not only with digital painting, but I think this could help with oil painting or acrylic painting and uh, really getting the values correct. So that's it for today. Um, please like and subscribe. I'll be uploading content regularly. At the moment, I'm focusing on the 100 portraits, but I'll be covering a wide range of art and design related subjects and and i'm also planning on making videos on how you can apply your drawings or painting into into like real life projects so i hope that helped i hope you enjoyed the video i'll see you guys in the next one thank you